Hi, and welcome to this short video on how to use Paint.net to make an ebook cover. I've just booted up Paint.net, which is a free downloadable program from the internet. It's a bit like a simplified version of Photoshop. The Mac version is called Pinter, P I N T A. It works very much the same way, so if you have a look at what I do on Paint.net, you should be able to do make an ebook cover on Pinter as well. So let's open a file, file and open, the intuitive way to start up near the top left. And I'll, I'm gonna use a photo, it's just a regular JPEG. It's an image that I took with my point and press camera a few years ago of a Bondi lifeguard uh, surfing his rescue board in on a nice day, winter day. And I'm gonna turn this into an ebook cover. To understand though how big it needs to be, it's probably a good idea to start by going to image and resize. I'm not gonna immediately resize it. Just have a look here at some of the dimensions that are uh, listed. The width is measured in pixels, 3,648 pixels. The height is in 2,736 pixels. And importantly, the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. Now, all that means that this screen resolution, 72, is typical for a computer screen and for an ebook. So we can leave the resolution where it is. Both Kindle and Smashwords like to have files that are no longer than 2,500 pixels on the longer side. So you could have it in height or width. I'm gonna do a portrait cover, uh, which means an upright cover as opposed to a landscape cover. And you can see there, if you'd like to think in inches, you can, but 50 inches wide by 38 inches high, well, uh, it seems excessive. It, really, it's better to think in pixels. I'm going to cancel that. That was just to show you the dimensions. The first thing I'm going to do is go up to this toolbox near the left corner. I'm going to select the rectangle shortcut key or rectangle select. I'm going to click on that. I sometimes just call it the marking tool. And I'm going to mark out the area that I'd like to use for my cover. Just click and drag. And I'm just going to make a bit of a guess there. I reckon that'll be pretty good. And I'll just release it. Now I'm going to crop it out. And to do that, you go image again and crop to selection. Give it a sec. Now, there's the image just by itself. And if you think, well, actually, you know, I wouldn't mind getting rid of a little bit more. We might just check the size again. Let's resize it. Okay, so the height, well, actually, the height is very close to what we want. And so is the width. That's actually almost ideal. The proportion is meant to be 1.6 in height to 1 in terms of width. So if you do the maths on that, you'll find that's pretty close. Uh, the ratio. So I'm going to cancel that. That's worked out uh, pretty well on just a guess. Now you can process this image. I'm going to adjustments here. All these different adjustments are to do with color. Um, you can change the black and change it to black and white. You can change the brightness and contrast, hue and saturation. Oh, I don't want to see that message again. Just popped up. <laughs> and um, you know all sorts of things there. Hue and saturation. You can change the amount of blue or uh, magenta or yellow or black. I'm not going to do that, but I will just click one token, one auto level, and you can see it, it'll change. Okay, maybe it looks a bit dramatic. If you don't like that, just hit Control Z and undo it. But we'll leave that for the moment. That's a function you can play with there. Now, from here, all you really need to do is put in some text. Now, I'm going back to the toolbox near the bottom left. I'm going to click on the T for text. Um, I'm going to put in some Calibri. Uh, typeface. I'll make it 144 points. Now I could use any of these typefaces, there are heaps, but I'm going to keep it simple and just show you what a very straightforward typical font can uh, look like if you put it on. Uh, I'm going to click up here and I'm going to type in the title that we'll use today. Not one Bondi Life. Oop, misspelling a bit today. Bondi Lifeguards. Don't worry if it runs off the page. You can go and click back, use the arrow key and then enter or return if you're on Mac. Bondi Lifeguards. Then I want that centered as well. I don't want the um, words uh, left aligned. Now it looks as though they've moved off the page. So see this little handle I'm grabbing just down there. I'll just click it again. See the handle? You just click. There it is. Click and drag until it's centered. It doesn't look too bad. It's not fair. I might bring it down a bit. Okay. Now, position's okay. I can do that on the background, or I can do it on a new layer. The next one I'm actually going to do on the layer, 
just to show you what a, a layer does. But I do want to change the color there. So I'm going up near the top right. See where it says colors? I'm going to click on that to bring up the color wheel down here in the bottom left. You can move all these things around, by the way. Just click and drag near the top. I'm going to make that yellow near the color, the cover. No, sorry, the title I'll make yellow. Now I'm going to do a layer uh, by clicking on layer up here and add new layer. Now watch on the bottom right what happens in that little window. The bottom right uh, pane there, just have a look at when I add new layer, layer 2 appears. Now you don't need to do this, you can see that you can put a text box straight on the background, but I prefer to put them on layers generally, I'm just showing you can do the two things. So when you've got this selected, if, if I went back to background, I couldn't do what I'm about to do, uh, layer 2, you actually have to have it selected. I'm going to click back over here in the toolbox on the left again, uh, T for type, and I'm going to change the size of the font. I'll just keep the font the same, so to about 108. I'll click around here. I'm going to type in my name as the author of this non-existent book. But I hope you sort of think a plausible book all the same. It's already center aligned. And I'm going to grab that handle and move it so it's just a little bit better aligned. Perhaps just above the foam there. I reckon that looks... I don't want to crowd that image. And But I'm not happy with that remaining yellow. I'll make it white, so I'm just going back over here to the color wheel. There's white in the bottom left corner. Okay, now I'm happy with that. Right, now that's all you really need for cover there. If you wanted to bring the uh, you and Mitchell down to the white, then you could change that to black, but that'll do for the moment. Now over here, it is a good idea before you finalize the cover to merge the two layers. So you might have a, any number of layers. You can do this by clicking here, merge layer down, but I will do it up here, layer, merge layer down. And just watch the two layers compress together. And that means then that the layers aren't going to slide over each other when they end up on a, an ebook reader. Final thing is to save the uh, image that we've got as a JPEG, final, or file I should say, save as, I'm pretty used to this sort of thing, Bondi Lifeguard, let's call it cover. And you can see the number of different formats I can use. Uh, just stick with a good old simple JPEG. It really is the best one. Uh, there are a number you can use, but just stick with that one. Now, when you click Save, it'll say, well, uh, what quality would you like to save it as? If I make it really low quality, see how small the file is getting, 302 kilobytes up the top here. But I'm going to actually bump it up to 100. Oh, 1 1.8 megabytes. Well, it's a little bit bigger than what I'd want. I'm just going to bump it down to, say, 98. Um, you wouldn't notice much difference really, but so it's under a megabyte. I'd like to keep it under that. Then just click OK and it will process it. And it's now done. Nothing seems to have happened much, but I'm going to bring up the uh, where the file was saved. And here we are, Bondi Lifeguard Cover. You can see I've just made it. I'll double click on it and it'll bring it up in the JPEG viewer. So there is a plausible ebook cover done with paint.net. I hope you find it relatively easy, easy to use. There are more features you can play around with an experiment with yourself. But for now, um, I hope you've enjoyed this and let me know how you found it. Thank you very much.